less and less sleepy as you watch this video. Yeah, wake on up. Let's talk about pendulums. <laughs> little ditty is a pendulum here and just like the thing on a clock it swings back and forth back and forth in the last video I talked to you guys about don't try choose trying is way overrated it's exhausting and it's mostly just spinning your wheels trying to be something that you're not and what we want to do the whole point of this this book and this you know this whole uh, exploration into reality transurfing is that we want to understand what it means to choose, right? We got a little bit of a glimpse into that in the first video. We understand that everything basically already exists in reality, in infinity. Everything already exists. Infinity is a thing, mathematically speaking. Therefore, eternity and infinity, even though we can't comprehend it with our mind, is a real thing. So somewhere, we don't know where, but on the other side of this material reality, there is the idea space. And that is where everything is stored. Every piece of data, every thought, etc. And that is the basic premise of this whole ideology. So that we don't need to try, actually what we need to do is choose. Because when we try, we're basically working in reality against things that have already been determined in the past, right? But we'll get into that a little bit more later. So in order to be able to choose, we need to be really able to understand what our obstacles are. What is in the way? Like choosing sounds easy enough, right? All I have to do is choose. Well, just choose. Okay, I choose a million dollars and my soulmate, right? You'd be like Uncle Ricky, soaking it up in my soulmate in a hot tub. Bam, done, right? Well, it's possible, right? Like it exists within the space of, you know, all that exists, infinity. But there's some interesting things going on back there, behind that curtain, right? One thing that we want to draw our attention to is an idea called pendulums. Now, I did another video about this, and I highly recommend checking that out. Um, I'm going to try and really just elaborate on the idea in this video and in all of the subsequent videos, right? I'm not trying to repeat information here. The point is to really dig deep and explore these ideas and these concepts so that you can get the information directly. And I don't know, my friend Lindsay said, oh, and you're a shortcut. That's what you are. So if I can provide a shortcut, so if I can help you get from A to B quicker, then I'm happy to do that, right? Like I consider myself like a blue collar mystic, right? Like I'm like, you know, I, I just wanna to try to boil things down in the most simple terms as possible. So this idea of pendulums is similar to the idea of egregores, which is a weird word, right? Egregores. It sounds like, you know, something a count might say. Uh, egregores, that's more of a hermetic term. It's like magical. And basically what that is talking about is, that is talking about like generated uh, energy beings, sort of, okay? Um, like demons, right? A demon would be an egregore. And what's interesting about that is, egregores are very more specific not all pendulums are egregores, but all egregores are pendulums, okay? There's also tulpas, which is a Buddhist term. Tulpas, okay? And it's a very similar idea. This is a generated thought form, okay? And this can all be boiled down to thought form. Thought forms. Okay? Thought forms or pendulums, okay? Energetically speaking. So what happens is this. People get together, somebody has an idea. An idea, it could be anything, okay? And represented of that idea 
is the thought itself, the thought form, the energy that it represents. So that thought form is like this cluster of energy. And the more people that think about that thought form and entertain it, the more it gets momentum. That could be who's for president, okay? And more and more people think, oh, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, and then it begins to swing and swing and swing and swing, okay? And what that does is it's polarizing energy. It's, it's an idea that's very divisive, right? Pendulums encapsulate all of these things, and there are bigger and larger versions of them. But what they do is they force a choice, okay? It is an energy structure, a form of a lot of energies, people's attention, okay? And they're radiating their attention on a particular idea. And again, this could be literally anything. Everything that you can think of is represented energetically by a pendulum. Everything. There is a pendulum for it. And that's a little bit trippy when you start to see the world that way. You're like, holy shit. Everything's a pendulum. And every, and, oh my God, right? So you start to open your eyes to this and you start to see behind the curtain a little bit and it's a little bit trippy. But hang tight because the pendulum itself is really, really cool to understand when you really get a perspective on this. It's, you're going to be able to disengage and detach and basically choose your relationship to these energetic informational structures. And we'll talk about that. But again, you know, we're learning to choose. This is, this is part of the process. This is the second, you know, uh, the second lesson in learning to choose is that everything, every idea, every substance, especially if a lot of people know about it, is represented by a pendulum. And what pendulums do is they get more energy once they're created. Let's take an example, I'm not trying to hate here, but Mormonism, okay? Uh, Mormonism is a pendulum. It's a religion where a lot of people, you know, uh, believe, have a certain belief about Joseph Smith, right? So a long, long time ago, Nobody had ever heard of Joseph Smith, but then this guy Joseph Smith comes along and he's got these ideas. He starts telling people these ideas. The more people that start to listen to these ideas, the more energy gets radiated to this idea and the larger it grows, okay? It gets bigger and bigger. The more people who are represented start paying attention to it. So that's what's going on, all right? And this being a pendulum, the way that it gets more energy, and boy, are we seeing this in real time right now, is it forces choice. Pendulums force a choice to create polarization, okay? You hear this word a lot. There's a lot of polarization right now, division, okay, polarization. So you've got people who are Mormons, these people, and then you got people who don't like Mormonism, okay? They're like, no, protest the protests. We don't like Mormonism. They don't like it. So they're radiating their energy, guess what? Against this idea. But guess what that does? You guessed it, it makes that have more momentum. There is now, positive energy directed at this, the people who are adherents, and there is negative energy of the people who are opponents. But the more you get these people arguing over this, the more this thing continues to swing widely, widely, widely. And this is why, you know, uh, Donald Trump's whole election thing was kind of blow, blew my mind and I understood it. But there's no such thing as bad press because the press itself, the negative attention, see, that attention is what is pushing each side of this idea, okay? So the way that pendulums force a choice and create polarization is through guilt, duty, obligation. 
Oh boy, now we're getting triggered, I hope. Because we all deal with all of these all the time. Guilt, we're being guilted to go and see our family, okay? And it seems like it's, it's, it's out of a good intention, but guess what the, pay, the road to hell is paved with, right? We have a duty to serve our country. I mean, it's patriotic, right? Well, if we don't do that, then guess what, what are we? We're, we're not patriots, we're bad members of society, right? We have an obligation to pay taxes and to support the system that's in place. Well, what is the system? Oh yeah, you guessed it, it's a pendulum. And it's not just any pendulum, it's actually a pendulum network. But we'll get there. Let's take this one step at a time. So understanding this idea, you start to see the world as a little bit different. And these obstacles, these challenges, these pendulums, these energetic informational structures are basically forcing us to choose things that we are not, okay? Am I for Mormonism? No. Am I against Mormonism? No, I'm neutral. I'm not polarized, okay? I'm not polarized. But the pendulum wants me to be. That's how it gets more energy, right? Is this a conscious thing like an egregore? I don't know, dude. Does it matter? Who cares? You know, I don't know what's going on on the other side of reality. But we do know that on the other side, beyond reality, as I like to call it, are these energies. Is everything in existence energetically? The energy represents the physical form, right? Like I'm energetically represented in this third dimensional world. And so is a lawnmower. That's a pendulum. It's not as polarizing as let's say a political party or a religion, okay? But it is a pendulum nonetheless. It is represented by a physical object and there is an energetic force behind it, okay? So anytime you are asked to force a choice, you are with us or you're with them. Oh, well, are you really? Ask yourself that question again. Are you going to choose guilt, duty, or obligation? Every time you do, you're giving up your ability to choose. The freedom of choice does not rely on other people's ideas, other people's uh, creations. These are businesses. These are, um, you know, uh, cultures. These are, you know, nations and, I mean, I could go on and on. Literally everything in reality is represented energetically by a pendulum. So whenever we do decide that we're going to do a forced choice and we say we're going this way or we're going that way, we're giving up our individuality, okay? And the more we give up our individuality, the less freedom we have to choose because we are identifying with an energetic informational structure, some other idea that we either conform to or actively fight against. And when we actively fight against it, we're building it just as much as the people who are proponents of it. Okay, this is so critical. If we could understand this a little bit better in society, we would go a very, 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 very long way, okay? And I'm trying to do this and toe the line here without stepping on toes, but, uh, it's, <laughs> it's not easily done, right? There's a lot of divisive issues, okay? And truly, if you ask yourself a question, if you have identified as something at any point in your life, a Democrat, a Republican, you know, a Libertarian, an Anarchist, a Socialist, whatever, you've identified with something that you don't necessarily represent every tenet of. So I'm not saying that you can't, you know, belong to a group, but groups get out of control. And this is how they do it. Polarization. Now, when you have a group, it is possible to have a more healthy group. 
Okay, you can have a more healthy group, and usually that that has some sort of checks and balances, right? Like a mission statement, like something written down that everyone agrees with, because that keeps this from swinging too wildly. Because the tendency of the pendulum is to try to swing to the most radical, the most radical, and then that equals the swing back. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, polarizing more and more and ultimately cementing itself into place. That's the idea. It wants to swing so wide, right? And again, I'm not saying that it has conscious will. I don't believe that, it, that most of these do. They might, again, I don't know. But swinging back and forth, back and forth, trying to up the ante from both sides and creating more and more polarization. Now, the way to stop a pendulum, disengage from it. There are small ones too, okay? Small ones like just being triggered by something, like being at dinner and then, you know, a boomer masticating. <laughs> Did you bite down on an arthritic hand or what? And you just want to stab them in the hand with a fork, you know? Um, I don't know. Um, but you get my gist, right? Like somebody who smacks their cereal. I can't stand it. It drives me absolutely nuts. It's a pendulum. But if I can just drop it, then guess what? It has no energy over me. And each one of these sort of, when it provokes, it has an expected reaction. And when you, you know, when you, uh, when you, when your reaction doesn't match the expected scripted reaction, then you keep your energy. Every time that you fall into this trap of guilt, duty, and obligation, you're giving your energy and individuality away every single time. Now, when you, when you disengage or you act in a way that is unexpected, you keep, your in, you keep your energy and you keep your individuality, and that allows you more of an opportunity to choose. Okay, I know this is a lot to unpack. Um, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. Hopefully you haven't turned into complete jelly as a result of talking about these ideas uh, or broken your TV set as a result of me explaining this to you. Just relax and understand that just because you start to notice these things, it doesn't mean that you don't have any power. In fact, quite the opposite. Once you start to realize these things and then you begin to detach from them, then you start to have your own individual power and that is what is going to allow you to be successful and actually have freedom of choice. Cool. So I know this was a long one. Thanks for hanging with me and we'll see you guys next time.